Hey, so I just saw uh, No Time to Die. I apologize if this is a shorter review. Of course, shorter for me will be like 15 minutes or something. Uh, but uh, this was a very long movie, and I'm literally watching this before I get up at like 5 a.m. tomorrow to go to a convention, so I apologize. Uh, but honestly, it's a pretty easy review to give. Uh, it's a good movie. It's a uh, good wrap-up to the Daniel Craig, uh, James Bond movies. Uh, I mean, he's announced everywhere. This is going to be his final uh, performance as James Bond. Um, it, it has pretty good action. It, it's not the best action. I feel like a lot of the best stuff is in the trailers, but uh, there is more character with him. That is one of the things I've liked about these new Daniel Craig movies, is that they do try to flesh him out a little bit more. And honestly, I'm coming from a place that didn't actually like Daniel Craig as James Bond. I thought he was a little too much of a sourpuss, which I know is what he was in the book, so I get it. And it's funny, because when it first came out, I was telling my brother, uh, uh, the first one, uh, Casino Royale, I was telling my brother, man, I, I I don't like this mean, angry, almost crazy, you know, James Bond. I mean, okay, crazy's okay, but not like a fun crazy, like just a down, angry, you know, kind of James Bond. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. You'll just have to deal with the almost dozens of other James Bond movies that we have where he's like the exact same character. I'm like, okay, that's a good point. So I opened up a little bit more after that. And, uh, and they, they seem to get... I don't want to say progressively better, but he got better, definitely. And it's interesting watching these movies, seeing him start off, again, to sort of the stone face, like almost no expression, uh, to now this, this Bond that has a little bit more of a sense of humor, which is usually what you want from Bond, and now in this one kind of has this I'm just done attitude, where he is a little bit more jokey because you get the idea, hey, he just kind of doesn't care anymore, but in an intentional way. It's not like a James Bond where he's not trying or anything. Uh, he, he does all the action, he does the stunts and everything, but he's also a little bit more quippy, but as a guy who's, you know, just kind of getting up there, has been, you know, jilted a lot, has been hurt a lot, both physically and uh, psychologically, and he just has this attitude, and it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch him go from this really tough exterior to just kind of, you know, I, I just don't care anymore. I'm gonna kind of do whatever I want. If I want to just disappear for years, I will. If I want to go with this woman, I will. You know, it, it, which has always been part of James Bond, is that he'd break rules all the time. But, uh, you know, this one started off from a, a different starting point when they rebooted this with uh, Daniel Craig. Um, the, the one kind of... It's not a huge problem, but the one problem I do have with this movie... Its side characters are a little bit more entertaining than its main characters. And that's not too big an insult because the main characters are still good. There's no character that would come on and I'd be like, oh man, like, like this person. Uh, everyone was pretty entertaining. Uh, you know, there was, and there have been James Bond characters where I'm like, oh God, like, you know, Denise Richards in, you know, uh, uh, one of whichever Pierce Brosnan one that was. Um, but uh, in this one, for example, the, the villain in this, uh, he looks cool, he's got this burnt up face, he has like this mask and kind of this cool backstory and everything. But really, I just want Bond to go after this one guy, he's a little bit of a spoiler, so I won't give it away, but it's this one guy uh, who, without giving away too much, He's a person he comes across again in a car in a forest later. And when you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. But that's the one where when he showed up, I'm like, Oh, I hope you get him. I want you to get him. Uh, I felt much more of like this, you know, like they almost should have been main enemies instead of this kind of traditional Bond villain, the one that gives all the long speeches, the one that has the giant lair and everything, which is is fine, but it doesn't look like a villain who's really having fun. Uh, it almost has like a Jared Leto vibe to it. Like, not quite, but there is kind of that pretentious, you know, smug, full of yourself, but not in a way that's aware. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like people are either going to really like his performance or, or say it's a little too pompous. Um, and it probably is intentional. I think he's supposed to be very, you know, snobby and everything. Uh, you know, he's teamed up again uh, with somebody in this one, another double O agent. And, and she's fine, but then there's someone else in the movie he teamed up with earlier. 
who is a lot more fun, and they're very clever by not having her in the movie long. I find uh, uh, the Pierce Brosnan movies did this too, and I really liked it where you'd have this entertaining character that's really funny, but they do not overstay their welcome. They stay just the perfect amount of time, because I was thinking to myself, you know, she was in this... I want to see more of her, but then I'm also thinking if I saw more, I might start to get annoyed by her. <laughs> um, but but I, she was very charming when she was on screen, and, and she kind of, uh, you know, went back and forth between being this newcomer and also this, uh, you know, badass at the same time. Uh, but like I said, she's not in it uh, too much. The other one, uh, the other double O agent, is in it a lot more, and, and she's okay. There's, like I said, there's uh, talk about who's going to be the next uh, 007, or who's going to be the next James Bond, or how's it going to work, is going to be in another reboot? Is it going to stay in this universe? Are they just going to get a whole new cast? What are they going to do? Uh, I will say if they go with this uh, character, they got to make her a little bit more interesting. I thought she was, like I said, she gets the job done. It's fine, but I feel like you can make her a lot more complex if you're going to, and you know, funny and witty and all that stuff, if you're going to go that route, which I don't know if they are or not. Uh, but I said the same thing about Daniel Craig. I thought he was way too boring, and he turned out to be really good. And like I said, I like watching these movies. I like seeing him progress. I like, uh, you know, Felix is back in this movie. Oh, God, actually, a ton of characters from the Daniel Craig movies uh, come back in this one. That's another thing I really like about uh, th this reboot that they did is that there is a little bit of a continuing story. In the other James Bond movies, there's definitely returning characters. But this one, it's not 100% one linear story, but there are elements that come back. And uh, it definitely story elements that come back and, and, and characters and so forth. So uh, so I really like that. I, I thought that was kind of a good uh, change of pace. And I don't know where they're going to go now. And again, coming from someone that said, nope, James Bond has to wear a tux, he has to always say shaken, not stirred, uh, you know, there always has to be sexy women dancing in the opening, like, he can't ever get dirty, like, that's always the thing. Uh, this, we have seen versions where they altered it a little bit, you know, the Timothy Dalton one, actually, I think he did kind of a grittier, meaner James Bond better than Craig did. Uh, you know, uh, Pierce Brosnan, they tried to make it a hint more realistic. I mean, not a ton, but, you know, a, a hint more and, and give him a little bit more depth in something like Goldeneye. Uh, and with the Daniel Craig ones, they really tried to make him much more like the book, you know, where he's this really troubled spy. I mean, James Bond in the movies has been a lot of things. He's never really been troubled that much. Uh, you know, like I said, the uh, more interesting ones will do something like that, like I said, the Timothy Dalton and so forth. So I like the direction these films ultimately ended up going, and I feel like I do need to see Casino Royale again, because, again, when it first came out, I wasn't getting into Craig. Now I'm really wondering, because he's he left a good uh, impression on me in this, and I want to go back and see if I like it more now, because everybody loves that movie. And I think I was just too much in this one mindset of what James Bond was supposed to be, and now I think it's opened up a little bit more, so I wouldn't mind checking it out again. Uh, so, I can't think of too much else to say in this. It, it's a good time. It's uh, One last thing I'll say, I think I'll start with this. It's a long movie. I think I got in the theater at 8 o'clock. I did not stay for the closing credits, because I had to get back, and it was 10.50. So, it's a long film, but to its credit, it did not feel like a long film. I was actually really shocked when I got out and I looked at the time, I was like, whoa, I, th that did not feel like that was, I was there for that amount of time. Uh, so it definitely, uh, kudos to that. Th there are slow moments, but I think there's one moment where he's talking to the bad guy at the end and he's given his big speech and everything and he's got, you know, a little hostage there and everything. That's the only part where I was like, okay, we, we can wrap this up, you know, <laughs> anytime you want, but... It really, that is like the only moment. Everything else uh, went at a good clip. A lot of the characters do stuff that don't always make sense. The villain, I was saying he has a little hostage in there. And like a choice he makes with the hostage at one point. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> There's a couple of things characters do in this where I'm just like, what was your mindset with that? But 
that's always in James Bond as well. There's also, you know, like, coincidentally little ra ramps that cars can go on or motorcycles that are nearby or, 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 you know, rocks that are shaped like ramps or just there conveniently happens to be this really long rope that he can swing off of under a bridge that just happens to be there. Stuff like that. But that's part of the fun, too. So uh, I, for the most part, think uh, think this whole uh, Daniel Craig series has been a good mix of what traditionally makes James Bond James Bond. Uh, trying to tie it in a little bit more, I guess, to what the books are. I never have read the books, but everybody says they're a lot closer. And uh, I, I suppose just this, you know, in between being, you know, really more realistic and gritty, but still lighthearted and fun. And we can have the enjoyable action as well. I thought it worked out pretty well, so uh, if you've seen it, please let me know what you think. Do you think uh, they should reboot it? Do, they, do you think they should hand over just a completely new 007? Uh, do you think, you know, it, it, depending on if you've seen the movie, like, you know, should someone else be James Bond? Like, just totally, you know, pass the torch or, or whatever, start from scratch. I'm really curious what you think and what you thought of this movie, too. So that's about it, and I will see you next time. Take care.